Excuse me one second. I'm pushing, right? Yeah. Okay. Where is it? I am so sorry. Um, we had been doing this on Becca. This is Becca Butler, our chief programs officer. We're just going to push, push that one. Okay, yeah. good. All right. So we're 485 <laughs> acres. This is simply our village center. To the left, you can see the um, neighborhood and then if we were a little further to the right you could see our um, enterprises particularly horticulture we are a god-centered community um we have an empty chair out here and as our citizens said miss straight god is everywhere he's given us all these gifts but he doesn't have anywhere to sit so we ask god into our meetings and in our workshops etc location. We do have two satellite programs that uh, we have recently started, which has uh, given us the opportunity to help others start small, which we did as well. Uh, Yvonne Strait is our founder. She is actually my mother. Uh, I, my younger sister, one year younger, got mumps and cephalitis and meningitis and became severely brain damaged. Any of you all that are a little older might know that in those days, there was no such thing really as having someone with disabilities live in your home. You secreted them away. They told my mother, if you keep Vicki at home, she'll ruin your family. The mother set out on this journey actually to cure Vicki. In the process, it started out of our backyard and the Briarwood School was founded. Briarwood has two schools, one for learning disabilities and then the Tuttle School for people that have intellectual disabilities. More than 12,000 have graduated, but then now brings us to what happens when people like Vicki are no longer in school, or as we like to say, the yellow school bus stops coming. Uh, she wrote a book, Everyone's Got a Seed to Sow. We have a very generous donor that always likes us to uh, make the book available. So if any of you all would like, Everyone's Got a Seed to Sow, uh, we, it would be an honor to send that to you. So if you'll give us your address and um, it would be uh, an honor if you would like it. I don't wanna like push it. All right, our mission through the grace of God, the Berkeley community provides an educational environment that creates, uh oh, it creates meaningful work. Back up, we watch that. Um, because of our 14C, we are very conscious of not using the word job anymore. So we call it work. That creates meaningful work, builds a sense of belonging, and awakens meaning and purpose in the lives of adults with disabilities. Our vision, and y'all are the hopeful fulfillment, you know, of the vision, is to change the way the world thinks about adults with disabilities. We celebrate neurodiversity in our mission statement where it says we're an educational environment. You might think that our focus is educating the adults with disabilities. In case you haven't noticed, they need very little education. Who needs the education is society at large to learn the unique giftedness and that our citizens have more to offer us than we'll ever have to teach them love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. So particularly with scripture as our guideline, they have the fruits of the spirit. Uh, our core values do spell God rich. You all can read those. I just wanna point out one. It's not independence, it's interdependence or interdependence. And, you know, I have not met a person yet that is independent. I need you, you need me. I need our citizens. They need us. 
whether you work at Exxon or in a program for adults with disabilities, you are interdependent. So I'm going to point that out. Poor commitments, uh, truth, safe environment, excellent social stewardship, neurodiversity and safety. I'd like to just highlight truth, safe environment. I begin any strategic thought or plan with what could put us on the national news in a negative light. Basically, it's abuse, neglect, or fraud. We have incredible trainings on abuse and neglect and fraud, all of that. All of that training means nothing if it is not safe to come forth and to say, you know, one of my coworkers, X, Y, and Z. So our main focus is making it safe to come forth. There's a lot of tattletaling that goes on. But oh well. All right. Our purpose is for our citizens to acquire meaningful work skills and work in our own business enterprises. Brookwood is a model of reverse inclusion. Obviously, to experience the pride, to grow vocational, social, socially, emotionally, spiritually. And the grid in which we make decisions with our for our citizens is is it safe? Is it healthy? And will it make them happy? So a little statistics, we have 112 residential citizens. We have just added two new citizen homes, which will each have 12 more. So that number will grow by 24. We added our enterprise and education building, which will right now we have 100 in our day program that come in from the Houston and surrounding areas on transportation that we provide, both good and bad. And we will add another 75 to that. Our two satellite programs, one has 20, the one we just started has nine. You can see um, that we are committed, we feel to serve both an economically diverse and neurologically diverse population. We do not take a dime from the government, and we also don't turn people down because they can't pay, uh, particularly in our day program. That is critical to us. I don't know how this stacks up to where you all are. This is um, the average age. Typically, we have more males, our oldest citizens, uh, 73 in residential, uh, and our youngest are 22. Day program typically um, is never as high because typically if the citizen's 64, there's not a parent alive. Uh, so this is just a little bit about our campus, 10 group homes and in our worship center. I don't know if you all have, you know, been to Brookwood. It's just like a, a little town. And I think back the last I counted, we might have nine or 10 mayors of this town. <laughs> I mean, you know, so um, our, our, our kind of newest thing that our citizens are into and, and most people could do this is a fishing pond. It, it, it was created to provide irrigation for our horticulture and there was a fish in it. And uh, we used to catch that fish over and over and over. Now it is stopped. It is impossible not to catch a fish. And we have fish fries out here. Don't tell. It comes from Popeye. <laughs> so these are some pictures. We have a, a pool that uh, is just built really for fitness and fun. You can see them fishing. You get a little glimpse of our 50,000 poinsettias that we will be sold out of, in case you're interested, we'll be totally sold out by December 18th. Speaking things that are not as though they were 
like any visionary. This is our chapel, our, uh, this is the new uh, enterprise and education building. And it's the straight building. Brendan knows, we'll tell you later how we got to name it that. These are some of our enterprises that are on campus. Uh, stone casting, ceramics, finishing. Finishing is where they're tying the, the ribbon around the ornament, et cetera. For each thing that is made at Brookwood, as many as 15 citizens could have had a part in that. Um, our horticulture, we have about 100 in there. And our newest enterprise is woodworking. And we are bringing back, for those of you who've been with us a long time, screen printing. We just feel like it can employ so many of ours. Here are some of the products that um, we make. Um, I want to point out a little bit. I, I, I don't really know who the audience is, but I always like, if we have found something to be successful, I just want y'all to know. Uh, over to the right at the bottom are corporate gifts. And they're, uh, you, I mean, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. So if you do cards, go out to those corporations, et cetera. Places that have uh, golf, you know, tournaments, et cetera, get in with the corporations and foundations, et cetera. Because boy, you know, they order and it is for sure sold. Here are some more um, of our products that we make. This prayer bowl is, uh, has been incredibly popular. Those are, you know, y'all probably know what a prayer bowl is. Um, and if any of you are interested and have horticulture, you can ship succulents. So um, of course we found that out the hard way, the first few, but we figured it out. So if you're interested, we'd love to share. Um, going back to the neurodiversity of Brookwood, this is Christy. I know, you know, I'm sorry, I don't believe in HIPAA. I mean, I, I do, but we're so proud of her. Um, we needed to develop enterprises for those that were um, just more dependent, et cetera. And so as many of you all already do, these are some great ideas we got from our partners. We now make dog biscuits. And if you all are thinking about an enterprise and haven't thought about dog biscuits, if you really think about it, yes, you should wear gloves, but if you don't, it's no problem. And I always look at, what if someone sneezed? Oh, well, so dog biscuits are a good thing. She actually pulls that lever. She has a tiny use of that right arm and she can pull that and it actually dumps in the ingredients into that bowl. So she is really participating. So um, this is our new warehouse, et cetera, in our store. So how do we pay our citizens? We are the proud holders of the 14C certificate. I, I would say proud owner, <laughs> the proud certificate holder. Uh, we had a five week audit by the Department of Labor, uh, some of the advocacy groups um, consider Brookwood an institution. They came to visit. And typically after they do, they report you to the uh, Department of Labor. I want to encourage any of you all, do not fear the 14C certificate. Don't give in to, well, we can pay a minimum wage. They just won't work as long. That is, well, my opinion, that is not the answer. The answer is we'll go to Washington under Ashley Kim and together for choice, and we're not going to let it happen. And in the meantime, do it right. 
we can tell you that we have not always done it right because as you all know the instructions from the government are so clear we did exactly how we interpreted it but now we have a guy he has created a system we would love to share um and we're strict please don't not pay your citizens or start doing the hokey pokey if that's not your program already because you fear the, an audit by the dol they were here five weeks and still don't get it all right how do we get our money uh, this is pre-covid it's 35 percent of our revenue comes from enterprises 40 percent from tuition 25 percent from private sector from the very beginning and i'm sure brenda who was truly mentored by my mother i'll bet they have an endowment it's hard to work with brookwood without hearing over and over start the discipline of an endowment early every time endowment money is incredibly difficult to raise so you use the opportunity of a capital campaign and you make sure included in that campaign is 20 percent of the campaign goes to endowment smart funders want that they do not want to give you a building and then you not have the funds to keep it nice. They really don't want your program expanding without your ability to continue to offer scholarships. You know, you, you can't just expand and get 75 more people because of those, we know over half are gonna need tuition assistance. So in, we, we've kind of figured out how to make the pitch of how important that is, but it's all in the capital campaign. How do we serve in the health and wellness program at Brookwood? This is something that um, has probably made one of the greatest impacts for our citizens besides the power of work the anxiety to go to a doctor's office and wait and be out of your comfort zone is incredible and of course your goal is when a citizen needs to go to the doctor that the doctor sees them as they truly are not a wrapped up in anxiety adult with disabilities. So through cultivating uh, doctors, physicians, the who knows who, we now have the majority of our mammograms. We don't do colonoscopies here, <laughs> that's it. But, you know, your, your well visits, uh, your dermatology visits. We have one of the leading uh, cancer prevention specialists in melanoma from MD Anderson comes out and does full body checks. We have U of H coming to do vision and, and hearing. I, I highly recommend it. And you know what, at Brookwood, you can invite a friend from ceramics to come to your visit if you want. So our golf cart goes and picks them up in ceramics. They have their well checked up. They go back to ceramics. Works out. Dental. Oh, this is incredible. Um, we've had citizens that have always had to be sedated to go to the dentist. But through training the dentists, we have been able to now offer our dental program here at Brookwood. And the dentists come here, our dentists volunteer, the doctors actually charge the insurance and Medicare through their office. We don't handle any of that. But um, we 
do, we've hosted 160 physician clinics, which have really resulted in about 1,800 visits, whether it's, you know, a well checkup, dental, et cetera. So um, I love this. Visits to the clinic to see the nurse, 25 to 50 daily. And I think maybe two or three might be for medical reasons. <laughs> they love the nurses. <laughs> so one of the things Ashley asked us to just talk about was our biggest challenge in COVID-19. Um, the our biggest challenge had absolutely nothing to do with our citizens. You know, life for them has been unpredictable since birth, particularly if they're nonverbal, particularly if they haven't discovered visually cued instruction. You know, you're five years old, you get in the car, you don't know if you're going to school, you don't know if you're going to grandma's, you don't know if you're getting ready to have a tonsillectomy. You just kind of have to go with it. And so um, it was our staff and of course, fear of our staff. And we had our citizens, obviously, I, I don't know if it was federal or just Texas, but they had to totally isolate to their rooms. I don't know about you all, but we are an assisted living facility during COVID, and they used the word nursing home. And uh, we had to follow all those rooms. So my, my son, there's no way he's gonna do this. Well, the home teachers and Greg uh, created the Derrick home as the Disney cruise ship. So the home teachers would deliver room service many times with a white towel kind of draped over their arm as they would do in a fancy restaurant. Wilson loved it. They had dance parties at the door. So they could stand in their doorway, there'd be a CD player or something, and they would all fit. And, and then when they got to go on a walk, which was pretty much one person at a time, those were the shore excursions. <laughs> and so it, it worked for our citizens. Um, staffing, we have been blessed that um, we had some staffing issues, um, but we have more now. <laughs> if I could just say that, many more now. Um, many of our citizens were not here and we had to close our day program. And because of the PPP loan, we did not have to let anyone uh, go. So we had staff. Now we are full. Uh, we need staff. Integration into the community. So, um, of course, we have our cafe and store. I'll just mention this for our um, vision to be fulfilled, to change the way the world thinks. Our cafe can't like serve spaghetti. Our chef comes from the Four Seasons in Maui. He was a judge on the Iron Chef. And our store is merchandised, et cetera, from a person that has come from Saks. And so, um, but we have thousands. Uh, before, before COVID, we had almost 30,000 visitors come to Brookwood. We now host events, weddings, money, um, et cetera, and they're exposed to Brookwood. Our citizens participate in Meals on Wheels. We just finished the Bike to the Beach, which is an organization that raises awareness for people with autism. So we participated in that, contributed to that. Lots of social outings and of course, lots of sporting events. So think of it as reverse inclusion. Okay, this is our final slide. Uh, this is our chapel, but this is Patrick. Uh, 
Patrick has struggled all his life um, with an, a slight intellectual disability. Um, he does not have, he, he is deaf and um, he has a mental illness. So he is more than duly diagnosed. His family tried everything. Um, one day in the mail, my mother gets a check for $20,000. Brookwood was maybe five years old, maybe six or seven. And she opens it, she had no clue who this check was from, for $20,000. Mother picks the phone up and says, I just talked to the person on the check who are you? Do you know how hard I have to work for $20,000? And I don't even know you. Oh my gosh. She says, I know you don't know me, but we know you. You see, we live next door to Patrick. We have watched his family send him to every treatment center, try every medication, try every doctor, and recently we have noticed he stands up straight. He's, I mean, he's, he's walking with dignity and trying to communicate. And we were just so amazed and called his mom and said, oh, what new medication did you finally get? She says, there is no medication. There is no new medication. There's a place called Brookwood where he sits. They're not trying to fix him. They're not trying to make him something he's not. He actually has real friends that are like him. And this is the result. And my parents got to be friends with the Mundys, and um, my mother always wanted the chapel on the highest point of our property. And yet, as you all know, when you're raising money, raising money for an income producing building is much easier. If you'll give us this crafts building, we'll be making X amount of Santas and blah, blah, blah out of it, and it's going to bring this revenue, and we'll have tuition revenue, et cetera. But even in the beginning at Brookwood, uh, even thinking about wanting a non-income producing building is really, I mean, it's out of the question. And um, mother and dad were at dinner with the Mundys and he was a very common man out of his pocket before they ordered, he hands my mother a household check like y'all might write at the grocery store and it was a check for $1 million. And in the memo part, it simply said, for the chapel only. And that's really where we came up with, Brookwood doesn't just believe in miracles, we depend on them. And they're out there. And uh, you can barely see our empty chair at the very end. I meant to end with a picture of the empty chair, but that chair is um, all over Brookwood. And that's because Bill yelled out one day from the Horticulture Center, Miss Strait, Miss Strait, God is everywhere. He has given us every gift we have. He has provided shelter and all of our friends and he doesn't even have anywhere to sit at Brookwood. So that empty chair throughout our campus represents God.